Good evening, Agape. It's so good to see you once again on this Wednesday night. Come on, can we give God the best praise we can give him? Open up your mouth and just begin to thank him. You made it to the middle of this week. Come on, just engage right there in that chat section. Let somebody know that God is good. God is good. God is good. Come on, I need you to open up your mouth and give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless your wonderful name, Lord. You're faithful, you're mighty, you're just, you're omnipotent. There's nobody like you. Hallelujah. Can you look down your row, look at somebody and let them know there's nobody like our God. Come on, everybody clap your hands. Come on. We're going to do this together. Everybody. Whether you're driving in the car listening. Yeah. You may be at work right now. Yeah, you may be right there in the living room. I need you to bounce with us. Come on. It's all about him. Let's lift this to the Lord. No one else can receive the glory set. No one else can receive the glory. No one else can receive the praise you set. No one else can receive the praise. Come on, I said no one else can receive the glory set. No one else can receive the glory. No one else can receive the praise. No one else can receive the praise. Because he's holy. Omnipotent and mighty, Alpha, Alpha Omega, Omega, my Redeemer and Savior. Savior. No one else can receive the glory. Set. No one else can receive the glory. No one else can receive the praise. No one else can receive. The Come on, praise. I said, no one else can receive the glory. Set. No one else can receive the glory. No one. Receive the praise. No one else can receive Here's why. The praise. Because he's holy, holy and righteous, and righteous omnipotent, and mighty. mighty Alpha, Alpha Omega, 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 my Redeemer, my Redeemer and Savior. Savior. No one else can receive the glory. No one else can receive the glory. No one else can receive the praise. Father, you're faithful. The no one else can receive the glory. No one else can receive the glory. No one else can receive the praise. No one else can receive Here's why. The because he's holy, holy and righteous, righteous omnipotent, and mighty. mighty Alpha, 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 Omega, Omega my, Redeemer, my Redeemer, and Savior. Savior. Because he's holy, holy and righteous, righteous omnipotent, omnipotent, mighty. mighty Alpha, 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 Omega. Omega my Redeemer, somebody ought to give a praise right there, come on. You ought to show some sign that you're grateful there's nobody like him. Everyone say, I love. It belongs to you. It all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. 
sings them right there. Thank you, Father. We lift our hands and we magnify you. Why? Because there's nobody like you. Who can find someone as powerful and majestic and faithful? Come on, worshipers. I need you to open up your heart to him and just love on him. Speak well of him right where you are. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name. Your name is strength. Your name is power. A strong tower. Sing it with us, nobody. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you. Nobody like you, Lord. Come on, Reverend Tim, right where you are and say it. There's nobody like you. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you. Nobody like you, Lord. Lift your voice and say, oh. What an omnipotent Savior.
that there's nobody like you no one nowhere nobody like him whatever it is that you need right in this very moment come on let it just not be a moment but let there be momentum speak out of your mouth I am healed I'm restored I'm revived Oh God, yes Lord, you can go to him. When we run to him, it says in the word that you are safe. There's safety in his arms. Oh Father, yes Lord. You are our Lord, you are our Redeemer. Oh, oh. of days, the Alpha, the Omega, the first, the last, the beginning, the ending. He's bread from heaven, water in a, in a weary land. He is all that and so much more. But tonight, right here, right now, I just want to, I just want to worship him for being father. And I don't mean limiting it to that aspect of him, but to know that we have a relationship with him, that he is our heavenly father, and we can declare, because we know beyond the shadow of a doubt that there is no one, nowhere, that compares to you, God, our father. Some claim him as father, and uh, they can simply do so only because they're creation, but we who have the redeemed of the Lord, now have him as our heavenly father 
a right relationship because and by virtue of Jesus Christ and his sacrifice. It's in order, it's appropriate for us to praise and magnify the Lord, to worship him in the beauty of holiness, in spirit and in truth. And I trust that you are joining right along with us wherever in the world you may be, that you're not looking at us, we're not performers tonight, but you're joining in with us as we worship our Father. If this is your first time with us on this evening, we're well, welcome. We're delighted to have you. I know you could be still scrolling, but you stopped. And I believe not by chance, but I believe God would have you to be with us today. And I trust that you're already being enriched and encouraged in this atmosphere. If this is, in fact, your first time, I'd like you to take a moment. And there's a, they're going, there's a QR code that's going to appear on the screen. I want you to scan it. They'll keep it up there and give you enough time to scan it and let us know this is your first time. And uh, then once you do so, we're going to respond. And I'd like to encourage you to join us again online, but I'd also like you to join us here in person. Streaming is wonderful, but I promise you there is absolutely nothing like an in-person experience here at Agape. And so whenever you can, I, I invite you to come. Currently, we're here in person, 9 a.m. every Sunday. So even if it means you got to get up a little early to get here, it will be worth it. Trust me. Now, during this time in our service, we have what we call our agape hug time. Kind of welcome everybody and greet one another. Got to do it virtually. And I want you to be extra generous. Even if you've done so, people are still getting on and joining with us today. And so I'd like you to just be very generous in greeting one another. Give them the shaloms and your emojis, however you do it. And listen, make certain you do this. Share the love and share the link. I'll be right back. Amen. Come on, you can clap your hands. Like our pastor said, share the love, share the link. Come on, put some heart emojis, some hug emojis. Love on somebody right there in the comment section. Help us tonight. Sing, Lord. Lord. If you know it, I need you to sing along with us tonight. Lord, you are awesome. Everyone declare, Lord. Lord, you are awesome. Sing, Lord, you are awesome. Lord, you are awesome. Hey, if it wasn't for your love. If it wasn't for your love. Was it? It wasn't for your grace. Oh, yeah. 
yeah, I'm a, I'm a witness. And I can say that's my testimony. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? Where would we be? The Lord God is awesome. We're grateful for uh, the ministry that's um, being rendered this evening. And I want you to pause, please, and just uh, give some shout out to Team Agape. And not just those that you can see in here. That's obvious, but there are those who are making it possible for you to see in here and I'd like you to appreciate them as well so team agape so we've got uh, musicians and singers and audio techs engineers and uh, media team serving tonight and and photography so we've got a lot going on but in in uh, beyond even what's happening here on Wednesday evening uh, the, the service that's rendered uh, during a, a typical Sunday morning it extends itself to teachers and ushers and greeters and also I want you to include them as well give it give a shout out for your team we appreciate all that you're doing in uh, serving others in the name of the Lord I want to encourage you please to stay informed as to the opportunities for worship and service here at Agape please go to our website, agapecenter.org, and be in the know. I'd like to encourage all the ladies, all the ladies to be here at 7 p.m. this Friday. So in two days, be here, 7 p.m., for what we're calling Daddy's Girls. It's going to be a wonderful opportunity for you to connect with your sisters. Uh, you're not going to be sitting and listening to a lecture. There's going to be engagement. You're going to be involved, and I believe you're going to have a spiritual uh, experience, of course, but you're going to have fun as well, and I know it's going to be enriching and meaningful. So please be here. It costs you nothing, but just get here and be here, and I promise you, uh, you will not regret having done so. Well, we've been worshiping the Lord in songs, uh, uh, praise, and worship to the Lord. It's time for us to worship the Lord now. Uh, in the gifts that God has blessed us that we can give to him, sacrifices, uh, financial gifts in support of the work of the Lord for the advancement of his kingdom and for the edification of his church and for enabling and empowering ministry. I want to call your attention to Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5, and there's a few verses that I want to read for you, and I'm going to begin with verse 1. So it was as the multitudes pressed about him to hear the word of God that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret, or the Sea of Galilee, and saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and they were washing their nets. Then he, that is Jesus, got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And I'm going to stop there. Uh, I want to share this with you today as we prepare ourselves uh, to give, as we prepare our hearts to give. And I felt impressed to share this and tie it into um, the giving of the Lord's tithe and our offerings above and beyond using the example of um, Peter's gift of the boat to Jesus so that Jesus could use it. Mind you, uh, the Father, God, the Creator created uh, the wood to make the boat and everything else necessary to construct the boat and even made and owned the water that the boat was sailing on and, uh, and the fish in the sea, etc. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Here, Jesus 
then gets in the boat, uses the boat, makes it, a, a, uses it as a pulpit, as uh, the Message Bible translation says, and he's ministering to the multitudes so that when he was finished, he said, all right, Peter, uh, I want you to launch out into the deep. And Peter says, now, and, and prepare for a great catch. Peter says, Lord, listen, we're washing our nets. We were washing our nets just a while ago because we were finished. We had toiled all night, but we came up empty handed. But nevertheless, at your word, or one translation says, but because you said so, we're going to do it. And I want to just challenge you today, not just in giving, but whatever the Lord says, it might seem ridiculous. It might seem like it's illogical, doesn't make any sense. But if God said it, his word is creative. And when God says, launch out into the deep and prepare for a catch, then you can expect that God's going to make good on his word. So I want you despite whatever you might be thinking, considering your, your financial status or place and the challenges that you might be having right now, always make God first, do the right thing. Nevertheless, Lord, at your will, I'm, at your word, I'm going to do your will. So just trust him and watch as in Peter's case, there was multiplication, there was abundance, there was increase, so it will be with you. Perhaps you're not looking to catch fish, but keep this in mind that these were fishermen. That was commerce for them. So for them to catch fish, it wasn't just to feed their families um, from those fish that were being caught, but it's also for the marketplace, for commerce. God will bless you. God will bless those associated with you. God will bless your business. God will bless whatever your hand set out to do in his name, but you gotta take him at his word. Giving instructions are there on the screen. I wanna thank you as I do over and again, and I can't say thank you enough for your continuous and generous, kind support of the ministry here at Agape. Because of your giving, we have been able to do what we do um, on a constant and we've been able to do what we've done and what we continue to do and I'm going to be sowing seed I would dare not ask you to do something and I not do it uh, I'm going to give generously I ask that you would give generously as well uh, not under compulsion determine in your heart what you're going to give but ask the Lord Lord since it's yours what do you want to give through me tonight and then obey that and when you do it being prompt and willing to do it that is being a cheerful giver God will take that seed and God will transform it and it may leave your hand but it will not leave your life it's coming back as a harvest worship team is going to lead us because this is worship and this is an act of faith, so do what you do in faith, faithfully, as an act of worship, and don't go anywhere. I'm coming right back. I've got a word that I know is going to bless you, and if you haven't done so already, come on, share the love and share the link. Amen. God is all we need, isn't it? Come on, let's celebrate him. Let's continue to worship him, even in our giving. Come on, I need everybody to celebrate. Come on, clap your hands. God we serve is faithful, he's just, believe it, come on, and declare tonight, come on everybody say, you're wrong, you're all that I need, yeah, everywhere you breathe to me, come on sing it out, you're all I need, you're all I need, let your rivers flow, let your rivers flow to me, you're all I need, you're all flow through me
clear on that right we need the Lord let's take our seed and lift it before him and our father we acknowledge you as our source we are absolutely and desperately in need of you it's in you we live move and have our being apart from you we are nothing we can do nothing but because of our connection because of this relationship that you established we thank you, Father, for the life that we have and the blessing that rests upon us. And we thank you for the privilege in being able to share in the advancement of your kingdom. Thank you for giving us first blessings so that we can then be a blessing. Thank you, Father, for the cycle of seed time and harvest. For now we sow seed from harvest we've received that the cycle continues. And I know that you're going to multiply every seed sown and you're going to cause abundance and increase to come into our lives, even proportionate to the measure of which we have sown tonight. In Jesus' name, I declare no lack, wealth and riches be in the homes and in the lives and in the businesses even of these, your people. And I thank you, Father, that you can trust us to be good and faithful stewards so that we will be able to respond whenever needs arise 
not only having our own needs taken care of, but being able to help others. Thank you, Father, for such abundance and such favor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, I'm so uh, glad for this opportunity to teach once more. Um, not going to be very long. It doesn't require a long time to say a lot. And I just want to share some things that I thought I would share on last week. And as I pointed out last week, um, I didn't feel like I could do it justice in, in the time. And even with the time that I have now, I'm not going to give you an exhaustive presentation of a particular subject that the Lord laid upon my heart. Um, and I would encourage you to take what I, I am sharing and uh, meditate on it and let it enrich your life as it relates to your understanding of God our Father. And our Father, our hearts open to receive from you today. Speak through my lips of clay. And I pray, Father, that I will share precisely what you would have me to say and with clarity. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like you to go to the Old Testament book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 20. And we're going to look at a few uh, verses. We're going to look at the first six verses of Exodus chapter 20. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. So I'm, I've selected this passage this evening to teach a lesson that I'm entitled, I've been titled, um, strange but wonderful. So go ahead and put that in the comment section. Strange but wonderful. Tonight, we're going to look at what many consider a strange attribute of God, but it's also a wonderful attribute of God, as with all of his attributes. We're going to, for these next few minutes, uh, look at the jealousy of God the jealousy of God. It's strange, but it's wonderful. Jealousy is an ugly word um, as we consider it and its use. Uh, it is the green-eyed monster as uh, Shakespeare wrote in his play Othello. Uh, it has negative connotations of self-centeredness, uh, uh, suspicion, even distrust. Uh, it is a, a, a word that often represents some um, uh, um, hostility toward someone, resentment toward someone who uh, is perhaps better than you, uh, a rival, um, or perhaps even someone who has uh, more advantages or more stuff, be it material things or, or just whatever you perceive of that person. Some folk are jealous because of people's fame and their, their fortune and or their looks. Uh, people are jealous for what one reason after another. Uh, human jealousy, in fact, I'm going to give you a definition of the human, human uh, jealousy. Human jealousy is uh, resentment toward someone or against someone because of that person's success, rivalry, or advantages. It's characterized and proceeds from suspicions, fears, or, uh, or envious resentment. And that's just restating what I said a moment ago. But that's from dictionary.com. Furthermore, the American Heritage Dictionary says it's a fearful or weariness of being supplanted, apprehension of loss of position or affection. It's resentment or bitter, it means resentment or to be bitter in uh, rivalry and envious. So that's, in a nutshell, human jealousy. So there's this thing called divine jealousy. God 
being jealous, you, you say, how can that be? It's strange. It, it's strange that God could be considered jealous, that God even says of himself that he's jealous. How can it be that he who is holy, righteous, just, pure, loving, merciful, long-suffering, how could it be that God can be a jealous God? Well, it is so because God said it is so of himself. When we consider God's jealousy, it's different from human jealousy. Human jealousy uh, is, you know, based upon those things that I've said, and it's, it's, it's usually um, with regards to a person's um, selfish pride and uh, then their hatred of others because others perhaps may have what they don't have or uh, some other advantage or benefit. Uh, somebody's jealous because you seem to get all the ba best jobs or you seem to get uh, some of the guys uh, or, the, or the girls, be, you, you know, you, you, you're jealous because you, you, you get all the good looking ladies or you get all the handsome men and people just go to hating on you for what, whatever reason. Um, but Kurt Whalum, uh, in an article um, that he wrote, uh, this is this is I don't I don't believe it's the same one that plays plays the instrument, but he wrote in a, a an, in an article about the jealousy of God, and and provided this definition that I really like as I look for several. He says the jealousy of God is the holy. Let me back up. Excuse me. The jealousy of God is his holy commitment to his honor, glory, and love that manifests itself in the salvation of his people and the just condemnation of all who stand in opposition of him. So God's jealousy is what we would call a holy jealousy, a righteous jealousy. Um, uh, in, uh, there's a book, an article, Systematic Theology, Wayne uh, Grudem, he, he says, there is no fear nor insufficiency in God in the matter of his own glory, just as an absolute expectation that men of integrity and virtue would have to honor and glorify him for who he is and for what he has done in his mighty acts. In other words, God has a, an appropriate right to be jealous over that which he has created. Uh, I I'll not give the name, though I know who this person is, and some of you may know by the brief description, there's a television personality, very well known, uh, that several years ago uh, made reference to the jealousy of God and shared uh, with the audience and the television viewers, the live audience and television viewers, of their challenge with this presentation of God being a jealous God and how could God be jealous, had a real problem with it and um, said that that kind of turned them off about church and, uh, and, and, and the traditional view of God. Well, I suspect that that individual's understanding of jealousy was faulty because they considered it in human terms and did not understand. And it didn't sound to me that they even took time to search the scriptures to see, uh, to study um, so as to understand exactly what's being said when God says that he is jealous. Not only does God say he's jealous, God says, my name is jealous. Look at Hebrew, uh, Exodus, I'm sorry, Exodus chapter 34. Let's look at verse 11 through 14. Word of the Lord says, observe what I command you this day. Behold, I am driving out from before you uh, the Amorite and the Canaanite and the Hittite and the Perizzite and the Hevite and the Jebusite. Take heed to yourself and uh, take heed to yourself, lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land where you are going, lest it be a snare in your midst. But you shall destroy their altars, break their sacred pillars, and cut down their wooden images. For you shall worship no other god, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. So that's not one of the names of God that you hear often, but we see it right here in the scripture that he is a jealous God and his name is jealous. When we consider uh, this passage and even the names of God, understand that um, God's name is the, uh, is the essence of who he is. It's the epitome of who he is in essence, in character, in nature, in attributes. 
Um, so his name is consistent with who he is. He, 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 he's jealous because he says he's a jealous God. Jealousy for God is not a passing thing or a, fle uh, a passing um, uh, mood or a fleeting thing. Again, it's who he is as he describes himself. Since he is the highest and the greatest, he is the supreme, he is the superior. There's no one greater than him. There's no one that created the heavens and the earth. There's no one that created all that's on the earth and in the heavens. Uh, since we are his creation and since the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, since everything in the earth belongs to God, everything in the universe belongs to God, uh, you belong to God, whether you recognize it or not, then he has a right to be jealous over his creation. And so what we see here with regards to the jealousy of God in context is, is typically, if not always, um, as it relates to uh, the devotion, the worship, uh, the exclusive devotion and worship that is expected of his people, that they would not uh, turn away from serving God, Yahweh, Jehovah, to serve some created deity, some uh, carving of, uh, of, of stone or wood. And so whenever uh, the children of Israel would, um, would get off track, then the Lord would have to remind them that he's a jealous God. So he's telling them here now, and as you're getting ready to go uh, into uh, and progress on into the promised land, here's the law. I'm laying it down. This is what I expect. I am a jealous God. I will not share you with any rival. Uh, I, you belong to me and exclusively to me. God may make these, these claims and rightfully so. Uh, Ezekiel 29 and 5 lets us know, I shall be jealous for my holy name. So even there speaks of God's um, passion and the intense nature of it with regards to himself as exclusivity is concerned and his people. Now, God's jealousy does not, like man, does not grow out of uh, some sense of insecurity. Uh, typically, people will be insecure within themselves and then they got to vent, they got to express that, they got to deflect, they got to do something. And so that's often where human jealousy arises. It's not because God is fearful or anxious. It's not because of any frustration on God's part. I mean, he's God and he's always been the same before even Adam and Eve was, was created. He was this God, the jealous God, the loving God, the merciful God, the gracious. He did not evolve. We don't have an evolving God. He is perfect in all of his ways. Um, I want to share these couple of things in these few minutes that I have uh, left on for tonight's teaching. It's not an exhaustive list. I just want to give you two, two things that you should remember about the jealousy of God. The first of which is God's jealousy can be provoked. God's jealousy can be provoked. Psalm 78 and 58, and this lends itself to what I said just a minute or so ago. For they, speaking of his, his people, for they provoked him to anger with their high places, that is their idols and, and the worship of idols, and moved him to jealousy with their carved images. So these high places, uh, carved image, and, and there's names, Astera poles, and all this stuff that the, the Canaanites and, 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 and the Hevites and the Hittites and all the other types did. Um, he said, no, 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 that's, that's not for you. Uh, I'm the one that created you, made you a people when you were not a people. I'm the one that uh, delivered you out of Egyptian bondage, and you will serve me and me alone. I'm giving you this place. It's the land flowing with milk and honey. And when you get there, uh, there's some folk that are, are, are occupying the land. Uh, it's, it's temporary because they're going to get out of the way because you're going to inhabit the land, but you're not to subscribe to their beliefs, their religious systems and ideologies. You're not to uh, worship uh, so-called deities and gods, God of sun and the moon God and the plant God and the tree God and the ocean God. No, no, no. One God, as he's revealed himself to us, I am that I am. So uh, in Isaiah 42 and 8, we find these words that the prophet pens, I am the Lord, that is my name and my glory I will not give to another, nor my praise to carved images. 
lest we make a mistake tonight and consider idolatry just bowing before a carved image um, or, or something that was created uh, to, to look like a deity and we call it that. Sometimes ide uh, idolatry doesn't have any carved images, nothing that you could actually touch. It can be uh, perceptions and philosophies and even people that you can idolize. And he said, I'm not sharing my praise with no one. It belongs to him and to him alone. God is justly, um, justifiably jealous uh, when we give our worship, our praise, our honor, our time, talent, and treasure to another. That is an insult to God. He says, I am a jealous God. Paul reiterates the idea when he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 2, I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy. Make certain that you do not take what God has given you and make it an idol. Um, the, 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 the creator cannot, or the creation cannot, must not try to create its own creation. We may not be bowing down to carved images of stone or images uh, made of metal, um, but we have created for ourselves our own image of God, and we've modified, we've altered, we've cut away the things that we didn't like about God, and we've created our own God, and that's who we bow to, and we should never do that. That will provoke God to jealousy. The second thing is this, that God's Loving jealousy is always to our advantage or benefit, okay? I want you to consider Zechariah as a reference. Zechariah chapter 1. Let's begin at verse 13, and we're going to go to verse 17. And the Lord answered and said, excuse me, and the Lord answered the angel who talked with me with good and comforting words. So the, the angel who spoke with me said to me, proclaim, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I am zealous. That word zealous is also the same word jealous. And you'll see it again in this passage. I am zealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with great zeal or jealousy. I am exceedingly angry with the nations at ease. For I was a little angry and they helped, but with evil, uh, but with evil intent. Therefore, Thus says the Lord, I am returning to Jerusalem with mercy. My house shall be built in it, says the Lord of hosts. And a surveyor's line shall be stretched out over Jerusalem. Again, proclaim, saying, thus says the Lord of hosts, my city shall again spread out through prosperity. The Lord will comfort Zion and will again choose Jerusalem. An Old Testament passage of God's uh, God's intention for his people, even though his people would go astray time and again because God is long suffering in his loving kindness, he wouldn't, uh, and in his jealousy, he wouldn't give up on them and just hand uh, them over uh, to uh, their ide ideas, uh, ideologies, and philosophies. But God, who had begun a good work in them, was committed to its completion, its fulfillment, as so with you and I. I want to challenge every one of you uh, to consider this jealousy of God, and I want you to understand it and welcome that as far as its advantage to you, that God doesn't want to share you with anyone. You are betrothed to him uh, as, as, as the bride of, of Christ, and he doesn't want to share you with the devil or any of his imps. You belong to the Lord exclusively. You and I are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people, not weird as one might think when we say peculiar, but we belong to God. We are his possession. And what he wants from us and our right response is that we may proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into the marvelous light. Let me pray for you. Our Father, I just thank you for this evening of sharing, this evening of 
of, of worship and loving on you and expressing our love to you. Forgive us, Father, for where we've missed it in times past and we've given to others what was rightfully yours and yours alone. I pray, Father, that we truly understand your holy jealousy and not be confused by it by making the mistake of comparing it to the unholy jealousy that marks humankind. I pray, Father, that we would uh, embrace this idea of you and see it as your love for us, your love to us, and that we would respond righteously always in honoring you and worshiping you exclusively. Not anything other, not anyone other. I pray, Father, that you help us to identify those areas perhaps where we are misaligned and help us to realign ourselves with you so that you are not grieved by our attitudes or by our actions. This, our Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. It's been a blessing sharing with you tonight. I trust that you've been enriched by all that it's been said and done in this place that you have joined along with us that you've engaged with one another in that comment section and you have one more opportunity as we sign off because I just want to encourage you one more time we just want to encourage you one more time no matter what you're going through everything is going to be all right that's everything about everything worship him always and him alone join me on the prayer call in the morning Thursday and Friday and I'm going to see you Sunday at 9 a.m. Shalom. Everything will be all right. Everything will be all right. We don't get tired of encouraging you. After the storm. Somebody really needs to hear it tonight. Come on, put it in the comment section. Everything encourage somebody. Everything is going to be all right. right. And I encourage you by faith. Say all is well. After, After storm cloud. Storm cloud passes. They're going to pass. said no matter what the employer said everything, everything everything's gonna be all right everything. yeah encourage yourself in the lord